Thank you, Brother Ed. Well, welcome. Good morning to Unity of Love and Understanding, our Circle of Love Sunday gathering. And as always, I invite you to turn within with me and let's begin with a prayer. We just take this moment to stop and to feel and sense the divine coursing through our veins. To know that the Spirit of God is always here and and is connecting each and every one of us together. So it's from that place that we can bless each other, bless this country, bless the world, and just know that we're being guided and supported by Spirit, no matter what the outward looks may be. We call for peace, peace and love and understanding. We call for compassion. We see each other as brothers and sisters. We release and we let go of any animosity, any upsetness, and only dwell in the house of the Lord. And by doing so, we resolve all issues that are laid before us. Because in God, there's only the perfect answer. So we bless this service, we bless each other, and we just know that all is in divine perfect order here. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, life. And so it is. Amen. Well, we're very blessed today to have one of our own, Sharon Smith, to uh, give us our opening song. Sharon, let me get you up here. Okay. There you are. Welcome. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Yes. Yes, following that beautiful prayer, I have this song to sing. I climbed up to the highest mountain, looked all around, couldn't find nobody. Went down into the deepest valley, looked all around down there, couldn't find nobody. Oh no. So I went across the deep blue sea, couldn't find one to compare to your grace, your love, your mercy. Nobody greater, nobody greater than you. I said I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, nobody greater, Lord, nobody greater than you. And nobody can heal like you can. Oh, most holy one, you are the great I am. Awesome in all your ways. And mighty is your hand. You are here, you carried out redemption's plan. You are here, you carried out redemption's plan. Said I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. 
and still couldn't find nobody, nobody greater, nobody greater, Lord, nobody greater than you. I said I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low and still couldn't find nobody, nobody greater, nobody greater, Lord, nobody greater than you. Thank you, Sure. That was beautiful. Thank you. Wow. Great way to start. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So the reading today is by Coventry Patmore. To whom that waits, all things will reveal themselves provided that they have the courage not to deny in the darkness what they have seen in the light. Last week, we talked about freedom, it being the 4th of July celebrations and stuff, and we talked about how we exercised our freedom. And that an important part of freedom itself was that freedom is not for just a person or a group of people. If it's not freedom for all, then it's not really freedom. Because what you're doing is constricting other people with what you're doing. Our purpose on this earth is to learn how to live with one another to learn how to appreciate each other. And that that freedom does not give you the right to impinge on someone else. This week, we're going to go a little bit further. This week, we're talking about to whom that waits. And what we're really talking about is faith. Because a big part of faith involves waiting. Because things don't instantly happen. Because if, if they did, disasters could happen. If you thought about something and instantly appeared, we'd have, we'd all be in, in, we'd have problems. So there's always a lag time between us thinking and desiring something and something actually coming to manifestation. And there's a lot of things that happen in that wait period. A lot of things. I remember when I received my calling many years ago. And I fought it because I thought this was the craziest thing for me to be a minister. I was a, a, a tough New York businessman. What, what, why would I want to be a business? Why would anyone listen to me? But it was a process. And when I surrendered to that process, I went to science of mind one, science of mind two, Science of Mind 3, Science of Mind 4 classes. That was two years. And then I took a year for Practitioner 1 training, Practitioner 2 training another year. And then I became a licensed practitioner, a spiritual therapist. And then, after only then, did I begin my studies in ministerial school. Now, I was taking two and three classes a week and working a full-time job, job, managing a, a 
technology sales force across the country, raising a family. It was, as I went through it, it seemed at times overwhelming. But it was that time period that gave me an understanding about faith, about trusting. If God gave me a direction, trusting that that direction would be fulfilled. That took 10 years. But 10 years ago, well, 10 years of, of training, 23 years ago, I was ordained. And I've been doing this for the past 23 years. And I love every moment of it. I couldn't think of my life not doing what I do. I mean, granted, I, I loved all the other things that I've done. I, I've, I've been very blessed along the way. But this, this is something that it's changed my life. It's made me look at life so differently. During that time frame, it, it, there was a, a spiritual maturity that developed by waiting, by moving through that process. And then the time in which I became a minister and started working with individuals and congregations and so on, the learning experience, I look back now and say, that time was so well spent. That's a part of waiting that, that you and I do because we're learning and we're growing. And there's benefits all the time from that. But there's other parts of waiting. There's a part of waiting where you know there's an impending disaster about to happen. And there isn't a thing you can do about it. Doesn't mean that you just give up. It just means that you now have time to evaluate a situation, to look at it from all angles, to see if there's something that you can do to make the situation better. That's another especially important aspect. It's not that you don't trust what the divine plan that's there. It's that you're willing to take a look at who you are and your component of the plan. What can I do to make this situation better? What can I do to make the life, not just my life, but as I said about freedom before, everyone's life fuller and more and richer and more meaningful. What can I do? Not what you, what can that person do? What can I do? That waiting time is critical. It's if you're in the midst of all this stuff, it gives you that opportunity, a time to process it, a time to get clear with it, a time to come to terms with things, and a time to make changes. A willingness to change. That's another topic, change. Because change is the constant in life. And change is what most people resist the most. Because we become comfortable. Even with things we don't like, we become comfortable. Waiting is not about becoming comfortable with anything. Waiting is about analyzing, reviewing, and testing. What would God want me to do in this situation? What would God want me to do to make something better? 
Those are my questions. Not what can I get out of this? How can I save myself? Or how can I change uh, the situation for the better for me? But what can I do that God wants me to do to do this? It's, it's incredible. The brilliance that shines and bursts forth when you're willing to wait with that desire at your heart. I want to be a place of healing and love and compassion for God. I want to be that space that when we move through this process, I've helped people transform just like I have transformed. I've helped people transform along the way and to see and to live their life for fuller and better because I was willing to wait and to do the things appointed for me to do during that wait time. A lot of people just throw up their hands and say, I can't do anything, I give up. That doesn't do anything for people. That doesn't do anything for God. That doesn't do anything for you. To just give up says that I've relinquished my, the power that God has given me to make change. Time, the time that we have waiting is precious. You see, when you think about your life, there are wonderful times that you can remember. But those are bursts within your lifetime. The majority is a time of waiting. The majority of your time is spent waiting for something to occur. But what are you doing during that? What are you willing to do during that time? Are you willing to change your thoughts, your actions, your words in order for a transformation to occur? The only way you can do that is to trust that you're being divinely guided. That's the faith I was talking about to trust that implanted within you is a seed that God wants to blossom because in you is something that's rare, that's unique. And that time from the time that the seed is planted to the time it all blooms is that wait time, but it's a, a, a nurturing time. It's a growth time. It's an opportunity to learn and to, to expand. But that's on you. That's on you. Whether you're willing to use that time. There are people who use it wisely. There are people who don't. But the beauty about this life is that life is eternal. It doesn't matter that something didn't happen the way it was supposed to in this lifetime, or that it seems that your life ended so quickly during this lifetime. That's just this lifetime. Here we go again. Life is eternal. So this wait time that's precious is something that you're going to be going back and around and around and around with all the time. You have the opportunity. You have infinite opportunity to whom that wait but are willing to see and to acknowledge the things that they saw when they were in the light, in the darkness, when things fall apart. One of the things about 
waiting is that a lot of times we're thrust into a situation where everything seems to have gone upside down, where everything has fallen apart. And people sit there and wait and do nothing compared to now I have a time to see how can I make changes? How can I make things better? Waiting is not doing nothing. We've, we've developed that over time that when we wait for something, we're not doing anything. No. We are a multifaceted spiritual being in this human form. We're capable of doing multiple things at one time. And the most important one is to trust the internal guide that is the divine inside of you. And whatever is placed in front of you, to pass it through the filter of spirit and then to take whatever actions come to you whether they're small or big or whatever, but be willing to take one step and then the next step. And then even if you can't see the pathway at all, even if you're in the pure darkness and there's no light ahead of you, if you're being guided and supported by spirit, step one to the next, to the next, to the next. And all of a sudden, somewhere down the line, that journey of 10,000 steps, you turn around and it's complete. You're on the other side. It's over. You've now accomplished what you were set to do. That's what I did when I, I looked 10 years after I started my, my ministerial training. From one course to the next, to the next, to the next, and so on. And I turned around and said, wow, that may have been a long time, but it really wasn't. What it was, was an opportunity for me to learn and grow. Now I can share that. That's where we want to be a willingness to trust and a willingness to change and to do whatever is appointed for you to do in that situation. So, to whom that waits, all things are possible. So let's turn within together. Let's know in the in the midst of turmoil there is a calm and a peace and a joy and a love that can never be hurt, harmed, or destroyed. Because it comes from and is the divine presence of God. And as Jesus would say, it's not low here or low there. It's not over here or over there. It's right here within you and me. It's the energy that connects us together. It's the energy that drives us to whatever we need to accomplish and gives us the strength and the wisdom to do it. Our charge is faith. Our charge is that absolute trust, that willingness to, to move, to hear, and to be in that light of God, even in the darkness, taking one step in front of the other. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, life. And so it is. Amen. Brother Ed, I know you got something for us.
I'm up on the ledge, standing alone, pouring my heart out to you. I'm out on the ends of the vast unknown, trying to get a message through. I'm the one hanging on to the bitter end, and whenever push comes to shove, I'll open my heart again and again, and again I'll do it for love. And the soul heart's been broken time after time. Till all that's left of my used to be Is this love of mine This love has carried me Faithfully all down the line And now patiently It's waiting on me to set it free and let it shine so now I oh I'm gonna let this love shine I'm gonna let this love The song being sung into the noisy crowd Looking for the listening heart I'm the sound of the dream Crying out loud Somewhere in the dark I'm the one, I'm the song For the ones who've got no voice The song for the ones who want I'm the song for the singer who's got no choice but to sing for the love of him. And this old heart's been broken time after time. To all that's left of my youth to me is this. And now patiently it's waiting on me to set it free and let it shine. So now I broken hearted for all the souls departed for all the dreamers still holding on this is your song I can see that your heart's been broken again and again. But each time it breaks open, love rushes in to help you carry on and keep you strong and somewhere. You'll, it'll pull you 
through And then it's up to you To set it free And let it shine Let it shine Thank you, Brother Ed. Well, this is our conscious sharing time. I'm going to place the uh, donation information on the screen. So, I always like to say first and foremost, whatever you decide to give, give with the energy you love. Because whatever you give with love, love returns to you multiplied. So that, that way you bless yourself and everyone else that you give to. So you can do this on numerous ways by going to our website, unityofloveandyou.org, and make a secure online donation. You can use Venmo, you can, mail, you can mail us a check, whatever you'd like to do. So put your hand on your heart for a moment. That's a symbolic place where love flows. So we know that love is flowing from your heart and outward, embracing all of us now and always. Thank you, Father. And so it is. Amen. I'm going to put up the uh, prayer protection for us to, to read together. This is James Dillard Freeman's prayer protection. I'd like us all to read this together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And all is well. Amen. I'm going to stop that. Well, this is for those watching on YouTube, this is not the end of our service. We have an opportunity, everyone that's online right now has an opportunity to share their insights today. So what we do is we stop the recording and we let everyone have an opportunity to give their, their input. We learn from each other. Now, you don't have to share, but most people do. If you like, you can. And we learn from each other. So I invite you to please join us any Sunday at 9.50 a.m. or before uh, Pacific time. Go to the website that was listed, unityofloveandyou.org, and they'll be on the right side of the page, the topic telling you exactly what we're going to talk about, and the Zoom link. Press that link before 9.50 a.m. Pacific time, and you'll be led into the room. And you'll be part of it. We would love to hear your insights. We'd love to hear the things that you have to feel and, and say about the topic. So we're one big family here. So we, we'd love to include you too. So let me finish this with a prayer. And then we're going to stop the recording and go into our sharing time.
So we know, Spirit, that things happen for a reason. That times of turmoil are that time that gives us to wait so that we can actively pursue positive and uplifting change. This time is no different. So we take this opportunity to bless everyone. Not just the people that agree with us or, or may seem to be in, in agreement with us. We especially bless all those who don't agree with us. Because there are no enemies. There are only brothers and sisters of one father. Spirit God Almighty. And as we understand that, as we embrace everyone through every way that they pray to their divine, we know that it's all one. And it's from there that peace, love, joy, understanding are expressed and experienced. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, life. And so it is. Amen. I'm going to stop the recording. I look forward to seeing all of you shortly.